Hello guys and gals and welcome! So today we're going to be going over another unique item. Uh, so this is another episode of Uniques! Uh, as you can see by the awesome graphic above, uh, you know, uh, to, to, was it this way? This way? Yeah, this way. Um, this is a very pretty shield. A very, very, very pretty shield indeed. Quite a blue and gold and black and awesome with the bull and the chain and all that cool stuff going on. Um, it actually is a pretty cool shield, and um, let's go over it together and let's talk about this shield and what it could potentially be good for. So before I get into this um, shield, I would like to let you guys know about a contest which is running. I'm going to be giving away a Arm of King Leoric Wand, a real one, not a fake one, uh, for my 10,000 subscribers. It's absolutely amazing looking. I mean, it is just the coolest. And if you take a look over at that video, I've got um, a, a way that you can enter to try and win this absolute beauty of a wand. Um, I promise I don't think it's actually real bone. <laughs> I promise maybe it's not bone. That's why, you know, Maybe, maybe it might not be. Looks like bone to me. Um, mm. um, might actually be someone's spine. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, so we're talking about the Ward Gothic shield today. A very, very pretty shield. Uh, just, just a very beautiful shield indeed. And, uh, and it also is a really nice shield as far as defensive uh, mechanics are concerned. Um, it's not ridiculously hard to get your hands on. And, um, and it does also come in an ethereal form, which could be useful on... Um, Perhaps an Act 3 mercenary. Um, it may not necessarily be the best shield for a paladin, and as we explore that, you may find out why. Uh, and let's go over this together. So right off the bat, we have the Ward Gothic Shield, which is a defense of 112. Uh, we have a level requirement of 26, which does posture it toward the end of normal difficulty. Uh, so you're not going to be able to use this until the end of normal difficulty, usually around Act 4. It is about when you get to level 26. Uh, sometimes you'll be in Act 5 by the time level 26. It just depends on how fast you're going, whether you're skipping certain zones or not. Um, it, it, uh, it's kind of uh, up, up in the air depending on how you particularly play. Um, so, uh, so keep that in mind. And um, with the stats on this, it's actually pretty amazing. So we've got uh, a 56% chance, percent chance to block, which uh, is relatively low for a, uh, a shield like this. Um, it is 51% uh, for Amazons, Assassins, and Barbarians. It is 46% for Druids, Necromancers, and Sorceresses. Now, the low block chance is actually a good thing for certain characters. If you are a character who is trying not to build block chance, specifically because you have horrible block recovery rate, uh, which is a thing, um, it actually works out really well for you. So if you're a Druid, a Necromancer, or a Sorceress, this might be the shield for you. Um, we also have a smite damage on this of 2 to 6, which is relatively low, um, especially for level 26, where hopefully you've moved on to something better than that by now. Uh, we have a strength requirement of 60, which is relatively low for level 26. Um, if this was a lower level shield, I would say 60 is a high strength requirement, but usually by the time you hit level 26, most characters have 60 strength, unless you're running some sort of ultra-low strength build. Uh, but uh, just in general, 60 strength is not bad. Uh, we also have a 10% increased chance of blocking on here, which does mean it's it's even worse block chance than you think. It's This is actually beefing it up to 56%, so it's actually 46%. Um, we have 100% enhanced defense on here, which uh, is not variable, so it actually does uh, stay at 100% no matter what, so you're always going to find this with the 100% enhanced defense. Uh, it does have an additional 40 defense, which is added on top, and then it has plus 10 strength, which could be very good to help you put on some equipment. Um, like, for instance, maybe you're trying to put on a really heavy plate of armor or a, a big, you know, heavy mace or something like that that has high strength requirements. Or maybe you just have, like, a, a really amazing helmet that you found that has really high strength. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, this is going to help you put on some other equipment. Uh, we also have eight all resistances, uh, which does vary. So it's all resistances 30 to 50. So a 50 all resistance ward shield is a perfect all resistance ward shield. And it's actually the only thing on the ward shield that varies. Um, out of all of the, the mechanics on here, the resistances is the only thing that varies. Um, you could also, theoretically, uh, socket this with a perfect diamond, which would, of course, increase the resistances even further. Uh, I probably wouldn't waste an um rune in something like this, uh, because um runes are a little bit more valuable than that. Uh, but as you can see, I have all resistances 50, and I could take my perfect diamond, put that in there, and go to all resistances 69. 
Uh, had to be that number, didn't it? <laughs> the 69 number. Uh, it also has magic damage reduced by 2, which of course is useful at level 26. It's, uh, it's not bad. Now this does come in ethereal form, which is 148 defense. Not that big of a defense bump, but of course uh, it would eventually break. Now, we can of course upgrade this, um, and, uh, and upgrading this would require um, some runes. Uh, we're going to need a Shaley Shaley and a Tally Tally, um, and uh, we're going to need another perfect diamond. Now, I'm not exactly sure that you should upgrade this, because I do know that the um, Gothic Shield tends to be one of the higher strength requirement shields um, on the list. And, uh, and what this means is that when you upgrade it, it's going to upgrade to a high strength requirement shield. Um, every single tier, there's a max strength requirement item. Um, if you've been following any of my upgraded set videos, uh, one of the upgraded sets that I did was the, uh, the, the Saigon set. And the Saigon set, every single piece of the Saigon set was the highest strength requirement for its tier. And so, of course, when you upgrade it, it goes to the next highest strength requirement item for its tier, and so forth and so on. Um, unfortunately, I think that is going to be the case for the Ward Gothic Shield, but we're always going to give it a try and see what happens. So uh, the Ward Gothic Shield is 112 defense, and uh, you know, let me move myself to the center of the screen just for fun. Uh, so 112 defense, 56% chance to block, 2-6 to six might damage, 60 strength requirement, level 26. And that goes to the Ancient Shield, which is 200 defense. Uh, 12 to 16 smite damage, not a huge bump in smite damage there. Um, 110 strength requirement, which isn't too bad, uh, and level 31. So we did get a nice little bump in defense there, um, but not really super amazing. And the strength requirement did basically double, um, just a little under double. Uh, but the level requirement did go up too bad with only 5 levels, so it went from 26 to level 31. Um, if you were heading into Nightmare Difficulty with this shield, and you've already socketed it, you've got yourself a perfect diamond in there, it's uh, rocking you uh, 69 all resistances, I could see throwing um, a shale and a talon, a perfect diamond at this to upgrade it one tier for the extra defense. I think that's viable. Uh, let's take a look at the ethereal version, and let's upgrade this. So this one is uh, going to go for 148 defense, 56% chance, 56 chance to block, 2 to 6 uh, smite damage, 50 strength, level 26, to 280 defense, 56% uh, chance to block, 100 strength, and level 31. So not a bad upgrade from tier 1 to tier 2. Um, I could definitely see doing that if I was specifically uh, utilizing this early game. Especially if you found yourself a ward gothic shield early game, like I say early ladder. Um, 69 all res could definitely carry you to end game until you get yourself a better shield. Now granted there are some easier to make shields than this. Um, something that doesn't require a socket quest. Uh, like for instance Achen's Pledge if you happen to find a nice 3 socket shield. Uh, but I do feel like the Ward Gothic Shield kind of beats out the uh, Ancient's Pledge, um, at least early game. Now, of course, once you get your hands on something like a 45 All Res Pally Shield with, uh, with the, you know, three sockets in it, and you throw Ancient Pledge in that, it's going to outdo it by miles. But um, those are things you find later on. Um, I do think, though, that this would be an absolutely excellent shield for a, uh, a Druid, a Necromancer, or a Sorceress early on, just to cap out those resistances and get some extra strength. Now, we are also going to upgrade this to the uh, highest tier. And to do this, we're going to need Lemco and a Perfect Diamond. Uh, now, I don't believe this is going to be a good upgrade, but we're going to try it out anyway. And, uh, and of course, it is going to go from the Ancient Shield. Um, I can't even remember the, the name of the Elite version. Uh, it's going to be 200 defense, 56% chance to block, uh, 12 to 16 smite damage, 110 strength, level 31 to 360 defense, 64% chance to block. So we got a, a, a up in the block chance there. 11 to 35 smite damage, still not good smite damage. Uh, 185 strength, which is pretty high, uh, way higher than the 156 required for a, uh, a, a Monarch shield, for instance, and level 75. Um, I don't really feel like that was worth it. Uh, the defense didn't go uh, up enough to really be amazing. Smite damage didn't really go up enough to be amazing. Um, the block chance increase was notable. I definitely uh, am, am kind of excited about the block chance increase, but uh, but it's still not 75%, so I'm not really sure that that would be worth a Lemico and a Perfect Diamond. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the ancient, uh, the, the, the ethereal version. 
uh, which is going to go from 280 defense, uh, 12 to 16 smite damage, 100 strength, 31, to uh, 520 defense, 64% chance to block, uh, 11 to 35 smite damage, and uh, 175 strength requirement with level 75. So uh, interestingly enough, it uh, it you know it doesn't go very well to the third tier. Um, I do feel like it's a pretty solid one tier upgrade, but that second tier upgrade, not so good. Um, of course, if you had the ethereal version, you would have to put a Zod rune in it if you wanted to actually use it, and uh, uh, that would definitely be something that uh, most people would not be willing to do, um, especially considering that uh, you would be giving up all the resistances that you could get from the one with the other version. Uh, but, you know, if for some reason you wanted to just rock around with an ethereal ward gothic shield, I mean, I guess, uh, okay. Um, it probably does look pretty slick in the uh, in the character menu, I mean... I would imagine so, right? I mean, yeah, it, does, it does look pretty sexy. Isn't that right, Mr. Kyle? That's right. He said, yes, that is correct. Those look very good. He's very excited about this. <laughs> um, who could potentially utilize this shield? Um, honestly, it's a very generically defensive shield. If you found one, it would probably be good on just about any character you put it on. Uh, 50 all res, especially if you get the perfect version with the 50 all resistances, is definitely going to be good on just about any character. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, I mean, 50 all resistances early on in the game is pretty clutch, especially when you get into Nightmare and Hell difficulty. That uh, could be a pretty huge boon if you can't find anything better. Uh, usually by the time you get to Hell difficulty, though, you've got something better than the Ward Gothic Shield. Um, if you want to burn a Saka quest on it, of course, you can bring it up from 50 to 69 all resistances. And, um, you know, just in general, uh, it actually kind of fits more toward the low block chance characters, who people who are trying to avoid block chance. Um, so if you're a character who has absolutely terrible uh, faster block rate, I would just, I would go with this shield. Like maybe uh, a druid or a, a werewolf, um, werewolf or a bear. If they need to put a shield on, this would be a good option because the block chance is relatively low. And I know that uh, werewolves and bears don't like to build block chance. Um, you could also potentially put this on a sorceress, a necromancer, or a um, maybe even uh, an assassin, barbarian, or Amazon. Uh, really kind of depends on what you're going for. Um, if you specifically need block chance, if you're trying to get 75% chance block chance, I probably wouldn't go with this shield because the block chance is relatively low. Um, it also doesn't have any increased chance of blocking on it, uh, which is also a bad thing. So, you know, m most shields, uh, really good shields, have increased chance of blocking and uh, increased block recovery rate, um, which will be very, very helpful to, uh, to, you know, increase your chances of blocking and the speed at which you block. Uh, this one only has 10% increased chance of block, and it really doesn't bring it up that high. Um, I mean, we're talking about 46% chance on a Sorceress, Necromancer, or Druid, which is relatively low. Um, all in all, the Ward Gothic Shield, I think, is an amazing shield, but um, it does get outclassed, I think, by a lot of rune words and other unique items that you will find later on in the game. Um, if you do find it in normal difficulty, though, I feel like the Ward Gothic Shield is a really uh, solid choice for a lot of characters um, and, uh, and, quite honestly, can carry you through most of the game. Um, however, uh, a lot of people would probably rather use a Rhyme Shield for the Cannot Be Frozen, um, or if you are a Paladin specifically, you can find a All Resistances 45 shield and put a very nice rune word in it, like Spirit or Ancient's Pledge or Rhyme. And, uh, and for us Necromancers, Necromancers tend to go with a two-socket head, either using Splendor or Rhyme. And, uh, and, and it's really all that it really comes down to is the ward kind of got outclassed by a lot of, um, a lot of rune words. But uh, don't take that to mean that it is useless, because quite honestly, it's not. Uh, the War Gothic Shield is still a very good <laughs> defensive shield that can be utilized from level 26 all the way up until uh, you enter into Hell difficulty, if that's what you want. Um, I mean, it's basically just a massive amount of resistances. And, uh, and it's not lost on me that when we upgraded it to the third tier, it turned into the Ward Ward. The Ward Ward. That's right. This is the Ward Ward. We're, we got maximum wardage here. So it is the warding ward of wardy wardness. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, can I just like put a second ward gothic shield right here and just dual wield gothic shields? And, then, and I just, just like beat people with the bull horns? Does that sound like a good idea, Mr. Cow? It does? This is the shield of your people? Yes, this is the shield of your people. That's why it has a, a, a bull head on it. Yes. Is it the cow king shield? 
Oh, okay. Mr. Cow is very excited about this shield. He said that this is quite the, the most amazing shield. He goes a very handsome figure. He said this was him when he was younger and less fat. What? That's what you said? Oh, I'm not supposed to tell you guys that. <laughs> Anyway, guys and gals, I do hope you appreciate these videos. Um, I have quite a few more videos coming. And um, as always, thanks for watching and uh, keep watching.